Welcome to SARM's railway grade crossing information sharing videos. First off, we'd like to mention some safety items. We recommend you wear some personal protective equipment while you're taking these measurements, at minimum a high visibility vest. And while you're out on the road, uh, never turn your back to oncoming traffic unless you have a spotter that can uh, watch that traffic for you. We're now going to be measuring the average approach gradient for this crossing. Now, to start off, the definition of the approach is what we call the stopping site distance plus the clearance distance that we measured in previous videos. So, the stopping site distance is determined by how far away you think a vehicle needs to begin braking in order to come to a complete stop before entering the clearance distance that you measured. For most typical RM roads like the one we're on, you're likely going to be using a B-train double truck traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. So from the clearance distance we measured, that's probably going to be quite a distance down the roadway. Now over that entire approach distance of your stopping site distance plus your clearance distance, you want to determine where your average gradient is as best as you can and measure it off the roadway. The gradient is determined from the rise and the run which we'll be measuring right now, where I assume the average gradient of this roadway approach is. I've set up a string and level and marked where 4,000 millimeters is on that string. It's very important that this measurement, which consists of your run on the string, is taken at a perfect horizontal and you also want to take your rise, which I'm going to measure with the measuring tape, as perfectly horizontal or vertical as you can. So here I have run of 4,000 millimeters. I've measured approximately 56 millimeters of rise. If you put those measurements onto your paperwork and calculate the gradient, the gradient slope for this crossing is approximately 1.4% and because the crossing it's rising towards the tracks it's a positive slope. We're now here at a different crossing to measure gradient again. I've again chosen a spot where I feel I can get achieve the average gradient over the clearance distance and the stopping site distance for this crossing. So we'll go ahead and measure it here. Again, I've created a run of 4,000 millimeters as I pre-measured it, and using the level I'm going to make it as horizontal as possible. And my rise is 220 millimeters. So again, because we're going uphill, that means our slope will be positive, and working it out, it's approximately 6%. Now, because it is greater than 4%, uh, we'll have to calculate departure time in the field, so please refer to the next video on departure time.